This is part two of the central venous catheter insertion training video. Prior to inserting a central line, we need to have the appropriate indications for that line. We should have a nurse and an assistant to help us with the central line insertion. We'll also need a consent form which has been signed allowing the line to be inserted. We also need the line insertion kit. In addition to that, we will also need a line insertion bundle with sterile drapes, gloves, gowns, masks, and hat. We'll need an ultrasound machine and the appropriate accessories and gel. We'll also need to have a timeout for safety prior to starting the procedure. Before prepping the patient for central line insertion, a survey of the proposed site can be carried out in a non-sterile fashion. Use warm ultrasound gel as this will be less uncomfortable for the patient. Today we'll be starting with a look at the subclavian site. The probe is placed near the site of, of proposed insertion and the subclavian vein can usually be readily seen. It can be identified by its pulsatility and compressibility. Notice how compressible that the vein is in relation to the artery. Doppler can also be used to confirm the location of the vessels. Here the vein is easily seen below the bone and is compressible, indicating that it is the vein. The artery is seen in an adjacent location, somewhat more deep and less compressible. Notice the vein compressing away while the artery stays patent. On your procedure notes, you must indicate that you surveyed the intended site and that the vessels were patent or not patent at that site. Now let's turn our attention to the internal jugular site. Notice the pulsatile location of the vein and the adjacent artery. General compression indicates that the vein is collapsible while the artery stays to open. If desired, the vascular nature of these structures can be confirmed with the use of the color Doppler. You can turn the probe lengthways or crossways with the vessel to take different views of the vessel.